What's going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 12 of the Lured Up Creator Series, the podcast bringing your favorite content creators to talk about their work, process, and the game that brings it all together, Pokemon Go. Lured Up is part of the Pokemon Professor Network, and today is Saturday, August 15th, 2020. I'm your host, Ken Pescatore. Solo today, Adam is, Adam is, uh, where, what can we say? Where is Adam? Where Adam is, uh, playing with cardboard. We're, we're just gonna put it, leave it like that because Darkness of Blaze came out and we'll just pretend he's like, you know, what was that movie with Woody Harrelson when the dollar bills roll over the bed and everything? That's, that's Adam right now with all the cards spread out on the bed. He's just rolling around in them. But I'm not alone. We are joined once again. By Alfindial. What's up, man? Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back. I'm really excited to uh, to get to hang out with you. We're gonna we're gonna miss Adam, I'm sure, but uh, you know what? I think he I think truly we're the winners here. Cause he yeah, absolutely gets to miss the power of me. two Kens. Exactly. <laughs> double double the Ken with no interference from outside names. That's it. That's it, man. So, all right, let's let's get caught up really quick. Why don't you just do an introduction, just in case anyone in our community has not is not familiar with your work? Just let us know who you are, where you're from, and tell us a little about about your brand and what Alfindial is all about. Yeah, sure. So, um, hello, my name is Alfindial, or or Ken, as as most people have have taken to call me. Although that does cause some confusion here. Um, I'm a Pokemon Go streamer, mostly. Uh, producing content on Twitch, although I do make YouTube videos on occasion, uh, and I do stream some other stuff on occasion. Like we've been we've been doing some Sword and Shield shiny hunting, and you know I played I played. Uh, did did you ever did you hear of Man Eater when that was like a meme for three weeks? Yeah. Yes, I know Man Eater. <laughs> yeah, the delightful <laughs> game where you play a man eating shark, and it's basically like an open world shark RPG. Um, it was a delight, but for the most part, um, you know, playing Pokemon Go on Twitch, uh, battling, and uh, you know, just generally having a, a a good time. That well, that's what that's really what it's all about, and we'll we'll get to learn about the culture of the Alfindial community and what you're all about <laughs> and everything. And I think that that's definitely the the fun element is very important to you, but. How were you introduced to Pokemon? Is is Pokemon Go kind of your introduction to the franchise, or or have you been involved with this world prior to Go? Yeah, I'm an I'm an old timer. I think um, by by a lot of people's standards, I I got uh, I got Pokemon Red and a Game Boy Color for Christmas. In yeah. hell yeah, uh, I want to say that was 1997 or eight. Um, it's it, been 84 years. It's been a long time. <laughs> so, um, you know, I when the when the game first came to the states and was sort of a pop culture phenomenon. You know, I had my I had my Game Boy Color. I had you know I was watching the TV show. I was opening packs of of first edition Pokemon cards. Like I was yes. all into it. Um, you know, when it first came out and and ultimately like drifted away for quite a long time like i'd pick up a game here or there i would i played like uh gen 4 a little bit um in college but for the most part really hadn't done much just sort of was always on the back burner as a thing i loved and then you know when pokemon go came out um i remember remarking i'm like i'm glad that my phone doesn't run pokemon go i'm really glad because i'm gonna be obsessed with this thing if i can play it on my phone but my phone doesn't run it so don't worry about it and then my phone broke the next like a month down the road and I'm like, well, I guess I should play Pokemon Go. And here you I am. You accidentally dropped your phone face down really hard on the street. Like, whoopsie. Yeah. So. There's, there's, I, I feel like there's, there's some conspiracy theories in my household about what actually happened to that phone. Nice. Nice. That, yeah. That, that's, well, well, it, 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 it's like that for a lot of people, you know, especially, I mean, I'm an older guy. I grew up with, with, with Pokemon as an adult, you know, but I was always a fan of the franchise and there were years, the first, you know, five years of the franchise. I mean, I was fucking hardcore. Like I couldn't be peeled away from it, but I worked in the games industry, but I would always have Pokemon like in the background and I always had plushes and clothing and things like that. And I love the music and the culture around it, but I was never really too connected to it through like gens like four five and maybe even the start of six but kind of gen six i came back and then like most people when pokemon go came out it was like all hell broke loose it was like all right i'm fucking cannonballing into this you know like uh like 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 a bull in the china shop like let's let's fucking do this and 
and that's that's really how a lot of people feel, you know, when they had past experience with the franchise and then Pokemon Go comes out. It's like, all right, I found my my new way to connect with this franchise. And I think it all comes down to it being the fact that it's it's a mobile thing. It's in our pocket. So it makes it very fucking convenient to be able to connect with the franchise when we it's already on a device that we're carrying around 24 seven anyway. But uh, what's your what's your team? Uh, you know, what's your favorite Pokemon? How do you like to play the game? I mean, obviously you're you're a PvP creator, but what 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 are the ways that you like to connect to the game with the game? And and what's your you know who's your favorite Pokemon or yeah. your current favorite Pokemon? Well, for sure, yeah, I definitely I remember talking about this the first time I was on the show, but I I am Team Mystic, although I'm you know on the the team of I don't care what your Pokemon team is. I've never been a big like. Oh, your valor. Well, we can't be friends. Like I, I, right, I, I right. always found. I know there's some places where there's like some real rivalry between the teams, and you know, kudos, I guess, for fostering that if that's your thing, or shame on you for fostering that if you're like getting in a fist fight. <laughs> but right. uh, you know, I've always, I've always thought it, you know, more fun. I mean, it, it, for me, it's more uh, to sort of tie it together. Is my favorite Pokemon was Articuno, so it was just a no-brainer for me to pick the team. Uh, very nice. Where's my favorite yep. Pokemon as the mascot? Um, I I would say I probably play Pokemon Go like a lot of people play Pokemon Go. Um, you know, I enjoy the game as a whole. Um, I really enjoy, you know, going on a morning walk for, you know, 30 minutes, getting a cup of coffee and catching Pokemon around my neighborhood. Um, you know, I really enjoy sitting down with friends. And this might be the, the part where, you know, my, my lifestyle diverges immensely from the regular, you know, I like nothing better than sitting down with friends, having a beer, and and maxing out my trades for the day. Um, you know, I, nice, I nice. As, as much as I do battle, I, I probably would argue that the feature I've spent the most time with in Pokemon Go is trading. Um, I, I almost can't fathom the game before trading anymore um, because it's just it's just such a nice way to you know sit around, hang out. It's basically like catching all the stuff you caught today a second time. Which I don't know how you could hate that. And are you trading for like the hundo? Is that is that the goal? Yeah, the goal is uh, it depends a little bit. Like I'm usually fishing for hundos. Um, you know, it's usually the end game. But obviously, the lucky feature was a big deal when it was released. So depending on what we're trading, sometimes even a lucky is useful. And then uh, I have I have an oddball collection, which is that I collect lucky level ones. So specifically right. level That's ones, right. specifically luckies. And uh, right. so, you know, I've got a, a number of members of the community that will hang on to, uh, you know, the level ones they catch to, to fish them my way. And, you know, obviously that collection is uh, taking up a lot of inventory space these days. But uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun to sort of have this sort of community project. I keep a, a, a spreadsheet with a leaderboard on it. You know, it's something that, you know, is kind of a fun you know, souvenir. I had a friend uh, today who, who's up in Seattle from Portland, and we we're actually lucky friends. So he contributed uh, his first entry to my lucky level one living decks, which was a shiny Phoebus. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, nice. But it's it's like a cool way to hold on. I know a lot of people will like hold on to souvenir Pokemon, and for me, this is you know one of the ways I, I remember where I got a lot of these. I remember who I got a lot of them from. So. Yeah. No. That's that's very cool. And and having it be shiny and lucky, it's like kind of pulling on a couple different different areas to to satisfy you know the the catch or the you know the possession uh, of that pokemon that's pretty neat that's that's very cool and how long have you been creating content and what kind of got you into the world of creation to begin with yeah so i'm relatively new to content creation in general um I think when we when we talked last time, I'd only been at it for you know less. I still have only been at it for less than a year. Uh, my right, first right. my first Twitch stream uh, was at the beginning of September last year. Um, at least my first like branded personal. This is me. Hi, I'm Alfindial. That was that started in September 2019. Um, I had done some streaming before that uh, with friends. I had done you know uh, a, a self style stream with uh with some friends a few months prior to that i had been featured on some ghost stadium streams as uh, a commentator and a battler um you know i had i had been sort of lurking around but i mean my twitter account is just over a year old um and you know my stream is is going to be celebrating a one-year anniversary here in the next couple weeks so um hell yeah i i've been lurking on twitch for a long time I, i've watched a lot of twitch even before 
I watched Pokemon Go content. Um, you know, I've watched a lot of different things there. Um, and I've always wanted, I always wanted to do it. I always thought it seemed fun. I always thought um, I could pull it off. It, 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 you know, it's something that I was like, you know what, I could probably, I could probably do this. Um, but I couldn't find, I didn't really see an opportunity. A lot of the games I had been watching, it just seemed like, man, like the idea of starting a Twitch stream is extremely overwhelming. And then, you know, as I started to, to get, you know, more comfortable battling and, and get a sense for what was happening with Pokemon Go on Twitch. It just looked like an opportunity. Um, none of the big content creators were doing anything regular on Twitch. A lot of times, if you looked at Pokemon Go on Twitch, there was one, maybe two people live at any given time. Um, so it just felt like an opportunity maybe to uh, to do something um, where there was actually a chance to get noticed and grow. Um, and, you know... Luckily for us, especially those of us who started early, you know, that paid off. Um, you know, the category's really exploded lately. Um, and it's been, you know, really, really cool. And I've been really fortunate to be somebody who I think benefited immensely from being in the category before it became what it is today. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that because, I mean, it's I, I think that there was kind of a, this perfect and, and I wouldn't say a perfect storm, but it's kind of a perfect shit storm because it was like. The, the COVID thing happening and GBL being released and all these kind of things that happen that really put a focus on, all right, I can't necessarily go out and uh, make a vlog, you know, so, but I have this creative itch, you know, what can I do? And it really gave, you know, open the door and for a lot of, a lot of creators to say, Hey, I'm going to give this a shot because I'm fucking stuck at home and, you know, I can't get out there. I can't go raid or something like that. So we'll definitely get there in a second. I think it's very interesting, the the dynamic and how Twitch has kind of uh, changed over the last couple months. But I do want to talk about, and we talked about this the last time you were on the show, you were going through like a, a transition with your with your work. And I know you said you worked in, you know, entertainment to a certain capacity, you were involved with like trivia and stuff like, like that. I think that that is a very intriguing background. And I think when it comes to creating an audience and capturing and retaining an audience, that dynamic had to have some influence on the style of your content. I mean, tell us a little bit about, you know, what your background has kind of, how, how your background has influenced what you're doing now. What, what did you used to do? Like, well, let's get caught up on that. Yeah. So, um, you're right. We, we talked a little bit last time and it's, it's funny cause these, these sync up, uh, these two recordings have synced up in a really interesting way, which I'll, I'll sort of get to towards the tail end of this. But, um, previous to this, I, I hosted trivia for a living. Um, I was a pub quiz host with a company called geeks who drink, who you should definitely check out cause they're awesome and they are still in business. Um, and, uh, you know, I hosted live trivia events, so I had my own regular weekly event at a pub here in the Seattle area. Um, but I was also their marketing director, so I ran all of their marketing channels. Um, I handled all of their sponsorship. I, I coordinated sort of our efforts to entice people to come out to, you know, our events that were occurring at bars and restaurants all over the place. Now, obviously, you can imagine the struggle that that business is having right now, given all the bars and restaurants who are closed, or if they're not closed, the fact that hosting sort of a, a, a room full of people is really not something that anyone's comfortable doing. Um, Absolutely. So, you know, for me, one of the things that that's really was really helpful, uh, you know, beyond just the, the marketing experience, which was really helpful when it came to like building my own branding and my own Twitch and Twitter presence and all that sort of stuff, um, was that, you know, hosting a pub quiz is very much about building and developing relationships with people. You know, these people come and they're here for, you know, this event. They might not know you might be the first time they ever see you, but being able to sort of like engage somebody and turn them from like, oh yeah, I go to trivia every once in a while too. Like, no, I'm a regular. Every Thursday at 7.30, I'm in this room, right, I'm in this seat right. and, and I'm here and we've become friends. And so for me on on Twitch, you know, when any anytime somebody comes into our chat whose name I don't recognize, for me, that's an opportunity to make a new friend. To, to bring somebody into our community and to, to sort of build that relationship. Um, and so that's been really helpful for me. That, that I think, is one of the things that, you know, one, I love about, about Twitch. One of the reasons that I, I, I think live streaming is truly, you know, the best way to do content like this. Um, but I have all this practice. To said, I have all this practice. I've done been doing this for years. I'm, I'm used to the idea of, you know sort of taking in somebody who I don't know and, and building a relationship with them and, and sort of fostering a positive community around that. That's, you know, I, I think, you know, more than anything, my success 
um, has a lot to do with the people who have become part of our community. And I, 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 maybe I'm just humble is the wrong word because humble has other connotations. Maybe I'm just an idiot, uh, but I give them more credit than I would give myself. I think I think the people in my community, my, my mods, the, the folks who are active, genuinely bring more to this experience than I do. <laughs> I'm just the dumb face you all you all look at as an excuse to sort of hang out together. But ultimately, I, I, I probably am a little bit responsible for getting all these people together. Um, but I really do, you know, I really do enjoy that aspect. And I think, you know, those years of practice of sort of being able to to take people who I've never met or interact with and sort of make them feel like they're part of a, you know, a, a community is, is something I've got some practice with. But um, yeah, to circle back around on that, you know, last time we recorded, it was right at, the, I think, toward, very close to the beginning of the whole, you know, COVID pandemic. And um, at that point, I had, I had lost my job. Um, my job came back, which was great. Um, and then fittingly, as of about a week and a half ago, my job once again vanished. So I'm back to the, the full-time content creator grind. Um, but, uh, left on amicable terms. I, I wish, you know, my former employers nothing but the best, but you know, it now seems like as good a time of any is to try and, uh, sort of see if I can, I can prop this thing up and, uh, and make something of it. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's wild. I wasn't even aware that that kind of came around and left again. That's that's pretty wild. I mean, that has to be, I mean, as a human adult in the world right now, that's got to be scary as hell because, you know, having having a job and then not having a job and then trying something new and something as volatile as streaming and how that works and how the monetization works with that and not having benefits and not having this and not having that and really being your own boss and there's so much shit to manage. Yeah. I think that that's it's a lot. It's a, there's a lot to be concerned with because there's there's so much to it. There's there, that's really all on your shoulders. How how has kind of that been going? And with you know, like you said, it's it's kind of fresh again that you're you're back on that full time grind. Is it fucking nuts to to think about that? That this is like this is your deal now? Like yeah, is that so wild? It is a little wild. Um, I, I think like I, I'm I'm old enough that when I was when I was young and you know people were like, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? The idea of playing video games on the internet was not a, a thing. Right. I, I'm, I'm of an age where the idea of a of, of, of full time content creator of any variety was not a thing. YouTube wasn't a thing. You could be, want to be an right. actor or a movie star or a comedian, but you couldn't be a content creator for something. Right. I think in hindsight, had this existed when I was 16, this is exactly what I would have wanted to do. Um, I think this would have spoken to me in the way it does now, where it's like this is absolutely my dream job. I love working for myself because there's just there's uh god what's the what is the phrase i'm looking for i've got nobody to be sort of responsible for except myself so if i take a day off the only person who suffers is me and all the work i'm doing <laughs> is for me um right, and that, that's right. really rewarding to me um the one thing that sort of has, has made this work you know two things one i have uh a a fantastically supportive partner who um is you know i have benefits i'm not worried about losing losing my benefits in that way and the other is because of the sort of the unique situation where you know i had sort of already sort of gotten the twitch thing off the ground i was doing okay i was making some extra cash um so when i lost the job the first time i sort of you know started to try and put these things in place my job came back pretty quick but in the in the back of my brain i knew that there was a possibility that this may dry up you know we got a ppe loan but in four months it may dry up if we don't have a proper revenue stream so i've spent the last four or five months starting to kind of get those ducks in a row on the possibility that this may happen so luckily uh, when okay. when it sort of when the hammer fell i was kind of ready um, it was already something i had been entertaining the idea of doing um, you know, sometime this year anyway. And, um, you know, I, I spent, you know, the last few months making sure that I had, you know, been a little more uh, conscious of my budget, saved a little extra money, uh, made sure that, you know, if I got to the point where 
um, you know, I needed to make content creation my full time job that I had a little bit of a cushion to work with. Um, and now it's just it's just full speed. So, you know, making sure that we're streaming more. I've, I've added a couple days to to my weekly stream schedule. Um, I'm producing more YouTube content um, and I launched a Patreon. So I'm kind hell of yeah, working yeah. on on all of the angles. I, I've been I've been lurking in other creator uh, creator stuff who I respect and, and getting a sense for, you know, how somebody goes from where I'm at, which is honestly more successful than I think I deserve. Um, to, <laughs> Will you stop with that? I, I, <laughs> people, I, this is this is like the thing I know. <laughs> I have some friends that, that this drives them nuts. And, and for me, I used to be kind of an arrogant prick. Um, so at some point I grew up and realized that I was an arrogant prick. So I, I, I hedged, I, I, I've, I've slid backwards to, uh, to, to sort of, you know, being a little more self deprecating, being a little more, you know, aware that I'm, I'm extremely lucky, um, in, in many regards that, that any of this is sort of working for me. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to hustle and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to try and, and, and be as good as I can. Um, but I've always felt like, um, you know, always feeling like I could be better and, and looking for content creators who I think, you know, I, I want to get to there. Um, you know, helps me a lot. If I ever, if I ever get to that point where I start to feel like, nah, I'm good at this. Um, I think that's when, right. I think that's when I yeah. just slide downhill. Cause I just don't think, I don't think I'll put in the effort anymore. And I think that's a yeah, really, no, I'm, yeah, I'm with you there. A hundred percent, man. I, cause I, I, I think complacency is, is one of the worst evils in the world because as soon as you get that, like you said, it just, you start to deteriorate because, you know, I, I don't ever want to feel comfortable. You know, I'm, I'm always, I work better in situations where I'm under pressure and I'm under the gun and I have to multitask and I have to wear a million hats and put out fires and all that shit. So it's like feeling complacent about something is like, it's like, yeah, it would be nice to fucking sit and put my feet up and shit. But then at that point, it's like, am I really, my, my grinding as hard as I should be, or, or am I working as hard as I should be? It's like, yeah, I feel you on that, man. And that, I mean, that's, that's the bane of many fucking content creators that, and that's also why you hear so many content creators losing their fucking mind and like, you know, going off the deep end and burning out. Yeah. There's, there's definitely, it's crazy. Yeah. I've given a lot of advice to, to, to various content creators. And, and you know, the first one is always, you know, to, to make sure that your relationship with whatever you're doing is healthy. Um, And it's one of the reasons why it took me so long to add additional stream schedules to my I, I could have I very easily could have streamed I could stream every night of the week I have I have the ability to do that but I feel like if I do that I'm just gonna end up hating the thing that I'm doing <laughs> like I don't sure. I don't want to do that yeah. I, I think there's a really strong argument for even when it's your own hustle um, for having a, a you know a work-life balance this is work it's fun but it is still work, and I think it's important, you know, for for one, for me to take, you know, time off from sort of the spotlight, and two, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm pretty confident that my partner, you know, would probably uh, lose her mind a little bit if uh, I was, you know, streaming eight hours a day every single day. I, I think that it's important to to make sure you make time for the other people in your life, and in Pokemon Go especially, so much of it is like I have this wonderful online community of people that. You know, I truly, truly love and they're great, but I also have a local community <laughs> and I, I do like right. to spend time with them. I like to be a part of that community. I think that keeps me grounded um, in a way that that I think helps make me a better per- person as far as a content creator goes, because not everybody who plays Pokemon Go looks like the most dedicated of my Twitch viewers. Um, and I think sure. it's important to remember that there are people who play the game that have never been on Twitter that have never watched a YouTube video, that have never watched a Twitch stream. Um, and, you know, making sure that you stay in touch to an extent with that local community and understand, you know, who those folks are, I think also helps to keep you balanced when it comes to how you look at the way that events are put together. Because I can't tell you the number of people locally who told me the Dragon event was great. And if you ask uh, Twitter... Do, yep, yep. Well, you, you asked Twitter, it was a fucking egg event. Right. If you ask the community, it was like, it was fucking amazing. I got 10 requests. You know, like it's yeah, I'm I'm with you 100 percent on that. And and especially in the podcast community, the pod, like if you're listening to a podcast, you're typically going to be on the advanced side of 
gameplay and mechanics and the understanding of the community. It's, you know, podcasts are very niche, but we also have a, a large segment of audience that when they're first getting into the game, they search the podcast space. And then, so we, you have, you know, these people that have been with us for four years and know all our inside jokes and all our nuances and they know the terminology and the lingo and all that shit. But then you have people that are just coming into it for the first time that are like, Hey, I want to learn about this. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard. And from a content creation standpoint, it, it's hard to balance that. But when absolutely I'm with you 110% when it comes to looking at the big picture of how events are structured and the decisions that are made. And it's like for the hardcore player, you got to remember, and I always say this, that that's like the 1%. You know, that that's the, you know, there's a lot of us and we're loud as shit on Twitter, but in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's, you know, it's not a dent in the giant player base. The, you know, the, the game is much, much, much bigger than, than the, you know, thousand or so very loud people on Twitter. There's millions yeah. of people playing the game. So absolutely. And, and I think there's, you know, there's a, there's a, an, a whole conversation that, you know, we can use that we can use the dragon event as an example if we wanted to about discussing one of the, the big issues, I think you know, Niantic, I, I wouldn't say issue, it's a challenge more than it's an issue because frequently they get it right, but sometimes they, they miss and that's where you see sort of plain scissors. How do you balance a game for the 1% of extremely vocal, extremely dedicated players, but also continue to present opportunities for casual players to, you know, engage with the game in a meaningful way. So, you know, you can look at an event like the Dragon event where I know a lot of people who's like, that's the first time they've seen a wild Dratini in the entire time they've been playing the game. Yeah, and, you for know, sure. Dragonite's such a, a great Pokemon for so many purposes that, yeah, am I super excited to see Dragonite spawns? Not really. But at the same time, for a lot of players, that's a big deal. That's more important than any of the other stuff. And, yep. you know, I think that event... My my stance would be that they dialed a little too far that direction. They didn't give the more uh, entrenched players a any real nuggets. The nugget was supposed to be obviously, uh, you know, the dino hatches, which right. that's a whole can of worms that I don't feel like we need to open. I think you did an entire <laughs> podcast on that. Um, <laughs> but I do think that, you know, there are ways that they could engage um, the, the entrenched players audience while providing that sort of entry level experience for players who are just coming back or for players who are more casual and when they strike that balance really well the events tend to be quite good um but yeah. i do think there's some opportunities where they, they they aren't they aren't utilizing all of the tools at their disposal for that sort of stuff um and you know we could we could we could rabbit hole there but i do think currently one of their big challenges is you know they've experienced unprecedented growth over the last couple of years so many of us who've been around since the start have, you know, all this access and all of this sort of history with the game that, you know, what we're looking for doesn't necessarily match what a player who who maybe played the first week and then came back to the game is looking for or even a player who's just been playing casually from the start. Yeah. Yeah, that, and I've been seeing in my local community. I'm looking, you know, because I play the. I love gyms, so I'm I'm constantly <laughs> taking out gyms, and I'm I'm seeing more and more level twenty, level thirty players in gyms, and I'm like, this is so promising, because these are names I've never seen before. These are you know lower level players. It's like this is awesome. It's like there's been this kind of you know real like a, a shot of adrenaline in in the mm -hmm. new player acquisition for Niantic and and you know I think that that's a testament to how they handle these events and you you're definitely right they it's they have to cater to both but uh I I don't envy their their design team when it comes to figuring that shit out because right. that's it, that's a, a huge huge undertaking I could only freaking yeah, imagine it's it's a massive challenge and you know I think um in many cases you know, any time that you want to, you know, if I'm if I'm at playing an event and I'm not super enjoying it, you know, the first thing I do before I just go, well, this event sucks um, is I like to I'd like to take a look at everything that's happening and, and measure my response by, you know, who the event is catered for. I'll give you an example of something that that does suck. Why were there why were there numels in the GoFest spawn pool? <laughs> oh, dude, you know, it's like. Yeah, there, there was. I mean, well, that's like the, the, you know, the, the, you know, working for to do the the global challenge to get Ferris seed. It's like some people would love that, some people hate it. It's like 
there, but you know, there's that one person who loves fucking Numel who's like, yes, this is yeah. this is my time. Oh, I'm sure that you there's know, but, somebody out there. But yeah, like there's definitely a few things like that. Like I think you know, anytime I see a, a, an event with boosted, you know, Dratinis, I'm like, I get this. This is this is a, a, a vital mon for players who are returning to the game. There's definitely some instances where I'm like. You know, if you had just replaced Numel with a fire type with a shiny check, that would have made GoFest a much better experience. Yeah. That, that's yeah. really well, you know, all you there, need to there's, do. There's, there's someone at Game Freak who's like, nah, we're putting Numel in, motherfucker. Right. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it, was not their, it was not their call. But I definitely think, like, you know, anytime you think about an event or a spawn or, or something, you know, it's worth asking yourself if your complaint about it if the thing that you're thinking is is from a place of of essentially access and privilege or if it's one of those things where it's like nah this this actually is something we should you know we should mention i think there's a lot of recently there's been a lot of uh complaints about um the the starters how the starters are are treated as rewards to an extent um you know they're gbl rewards they're frequently featured in events um and I think in some cases, I think that's a fair assessment. I think they're they're overvalued when it comes to the, the sort of how they're presented. But also, sure. you know what? The the Gen three starters with the shiny checks. There's a lot of players who didn't play those community days. They were not in the game or they got the day off. And I think that uh, it's not they're not the worst spawn they could put in. I just would like to see them maybe treated a little more like a mid level thing and not so much a a bonus. Yeah, you know, I think the current you know, but, event right now is a good example where it's like this is like the fifth or sixth time we've had the Unova starters boosted and they're just yeah. not feeling like they're not feeling special anymore. They're feeling quite like give us a community day on these already. <laughs> well, you know, and it's like and, I, and you got to wonder, too, with with those specifically, it's like, fuck, another Tepic. But like, is that is that like the Pokemon company <laughs> saying like, no, these are starters. These are important Pokemon. Put them in the fucking game. Make it so, you know? Yeah, I'm, like, I'm sure that that has something to do with it. Obviously, the starters in every generation are, are nearly mascots for it. So, you know, I get the uh, the density of them, but it does it does feel like it's a little it's a little over dialed. And I do know that, you know, again, I live in a big city. I have an opportunity to play a lot and see a lot of spawns. So I know that I see more Tepigs than the average person. Um, it's just in this case, because they've been so common for so long and in so many events, it's just starting to feel like maybe we could take a couple events off from Oshwat, Tepig, and Snivy, please. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, well, let, let me let me, let me, me get back to, to some content stuff here. I, I do want to talk specifically about Twitch, and mm-hmm. a lot of the creators that I've had on over the past couple weeks started on YouTube and have transitioned to Twitch or have always kind of been on both platforms, but because of the current climate and then, you know, that, that whole thing, vlogging doesn't really line up with, with where they're at, so now they're focusing on Twitch. So... I've always said that I believe, and I'm not, you know, a streamer by any stretch of the means, but I've always said that Twitch kind of gives you a little bit more lateral freedom to not only show your personality, but also have a little bit of a diversification of your content. And I always like picking the brains of Twitch streamers and saying, like, how important is the platform itself to how your content functions and the development of your community. Because I think that that's really important, especially for people that are interested in becoming uh, a streamer, that <coughs> they they understand how the platform works and the importance of that platform in creating the content. Because YouTube content is very, very specific to the YouTube platform. And I'd imagine that it's, you know, it's very similar with, with Twitch, correct? Like there's the, the platform really is a catalyst to, to the success of your content, right? Yeah, and, and I do think that that's, that's something that, uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot to unpack there, but we can definitely get into the, the, the crux of the question, which is the content you produce on Twitch should be different than the content you would produce on YouTube, if you did both. Um, you know, Twitch is live. That's, that's always, you know, it seems like a, a no-brainer statement, but the, the, the thing that actually makes Twitch work is that it's live, it's, To an extent, it feels authentic because of that. It's interactive. You know, you get to actually talk to the people who are there. You get to talk to people who are enjoying your content. They should become as much a part of your stream as you are. Um, At least that's that's my philosophy on it. I, I don't necessarily look at my Twitch streams as me producing a show. I don't think of it as like, oh, yeah, like I'm gonna script this and we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do that. 
Um, it's more about getting on, having kind of an idea of what I want to do today, hanging out with folks, and then just sort of letting that experience sort of organically derive from the people who are there. And I do know, you know, that's a that's a struggle that if you're just getting starting on, started on Twitch is really difficult because obviously if you've got 120 people in your chat, it's a lot easier to organically go places than if you're just getting started right. and you have two or three or maybe no chatters at all just somebody sort of lurking. Obviously, you know, you have to you have to produce something, but you know, my advice to to new streamers is just always stream like you've got a bunch of viewers sometimes even when you have a bunch of viewers people aren't that chatty um so just develop good habits and do and sort of you know make sure you're you're being engaging if you do see somebody in your chat you know say hello to them engage them see if you can get them sort of into the conversation um but yeah realistically like twitch is is a, a different beast than the other platforms i mean you can stream live on youtube and stuff but like you know actually streaming on twitch is just just different it, it, it really if you're gonna succeed i think you have to sort of lean into the fact that it's it's this live organic experience um but yeah i i think a uh, couple things really led to to the success of the platform as far as pokemon go content right now you know the big one is a lot of the covid stuff that niantic put in place is extremely beneficial to stationary streaming you know i can do sure. a, as someone who was streaming before you know, the incense upgrade and before, you know, the uh, expend, extended range and the bonus spawns and remote rating. Um, and, well, not and, walking for GBL. Like, yep, that's and huge. not walking for GBL. Those things are huge. They make streaming so much more accessible and they make the idea of doing a stationary Pokemon Go stream a lot more reasonable. We had to get pretty creative back in the days. There's there's some content creators who've been, you know, doing the Twitch thing for since you know the start who really have gotten creative with how they do, you know, stationary Pokemon Go. Um, and I think you're right that, you know, because, you know, sort of out and about vlogging isn't a thing that many of the, you know, big names on YouTube came over to, to Twitch. And as the the formats have gotten, you know, as the, the abilities to do at home streams got more, we're seeing those creators stream Pokemon Go as well. You know, there was a while where, yeah, sure, trainer tips, Zoe, uh, Holly, they were all on Twitch, but they weren't streaming Pokemon Go. Or if they were, they were doing it very intermittently. Uh, you know, Reversal's been on there on his insane Phoebus shiny hunt. Um, and, He's a and fucking those, madman. Those creators have massive followings of Pokemon Go fans on YouTube. But they weren't streaming Pokemon Go on Twitch. Um, because it was it was sort of a difficult thing to do, but you know, with that sort of shifting and more and more of those content creators engaging with Pokemon Go on Twitch, we're seeing many of their fans come over, and you know, folks who don't have the YouTube presence that maybe they do are starting to sort of see that trickle down. They're seeing communities there. They're seeing that there's a lot of streamers, and you know, I think we've all seen a ton of growth between I, I think what should be applauded the work of you know the, the pvp streamers who were there sort of when it was still kind of a wasteland um and you know capturing that wave of of gbl interest um you know go battle league has been absolutely phenomenal for for interest in that function and it's been sure. absolutely phenomenal to allow people to produce regular compelling content on twitch and also you know, those big name streamers coming over, starting to dabble more and more in streaming Pokemon Go has just broadened that audience immensely. I think there was always a, an enormous audience for Pokemon Go content online, either digitally or through videos. It just wasn't on Twitch yet. And I think we're slowly but surely seeing um, that audience sort of migrate over they're still on youtube obviously but you know we're starting to see more and more of that total audience uh sort of spend some time on twitch and um it's really been it's really been fun to see yeah i mean i've definitely seen this fundamental shift from the video on demand style viewing of like hey whenever i get home from work you know i'm gonna watch my trainer tips video to the destination viewing of hey my favorite streamer is going on at eight i gotta be in front of my device at eight you know, so that that's a, a huge paradigm shift for the, the consumer to adapt to. And I think that the Pokemon Go community has done an amazing job of that. And again, I think that's a testament to how well these creators are also paralleling their content on social media, because without the social media to 
to amplify the fact that they're going live or what they're doing or what their schedule is. I mean, it's really a very robust demand uh, on the creator to kind of get, you know, oil all the gears to, 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 to bring that community together and let them know what's going on because you don't have that luxury of just you'll watch my video whenever it comes out or if you happen to right. get the notification that I'm going online, like there's a lot more to it. But your, your content specifically, I think, is very different than other creators that are that are doing PvP even. So let's not let's not put in the into the conversation the 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 Mystic Seven or the trainer tips that might pepper in some PvP here and there, but they if they do stream stuff, they might be doing sword and shield and mm-hmm. they might have, you know, Pokemon Go on an incense, you know, kind of tucked away in the corner of the stream. But even PvP, I think your content is really unique because you have this a very different approach to what makes PVP engaging. And I think that there's plenty of people that are very strict and very academic about their approach to creating content. And, uh, you know, you kind of have, you know, the, the creators that are this encyclopedia style, you know, lots of data and numbers and crunching and all of that. And then you kind of have your content that comes in and it feels like a fucking party the whole time. And it's like, I'm having a fucking blast. Like, I'm definitely taking my pants off. So it's like, tell us about like your (laughs) your brand of content. Like what was that kind of important to you in the beginning with when you're developing the culture of your community to do something different? Or is this just kind of a natural extension of your personality of of what you're trying to do here. I mean, what makes your content so unique? Because it definitely has a different vibe. Yeah, I, I would say that there's 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 a little bit of of, of both. I mean, I definitely uh, I definitely would, would have described myself as a tryhard. Um, you know, for for pre GBL Sylph season one, you know, I was absolutely a tryhard. I think I finished in the top two fifty in the world. I was you know very close to. Uh, qualifying for you know the world championship when it happened like I was very much into it but I kind of I kind of reached sort of a burnout about the same time that I started streaming as far as burnout of like competitive competitive play um and you know I definitely still uh, dabbled in competitive play but for me the, the thing is is that I've always found that the pvp feature is to me the the you know the one true fun feature in Pokemon Go. You know, unlike you, I don't find much engaging about the gym feature. I like walking around and, and shiny hunting and catching stuff, but truly, that's more of a numbers game, and, and that's more fun when you're doing it with friends. Um, but PvP felt like, hey, there's the game. There's the game that we've been waiting for. There's actually an engaging way to meaningfully take all of these things in your inventory and do something with them. You do um, something with them. Like Instead <laughs> right. of just being a, a pile of trophies, I can actually use these things and engage with them, and that's that's really, really cool. So I've always been really passionate about the fact that I just think the feature is neat. Um, and it's actually how I feel about trading, too, where it's just like, this is a great feature to actually, like, do something other than just accumulate. <laughs> um, so, you know, I always sort of looked at, you know, as I was burning out that, you know, maybe I, I'm not going to be the guy who's like, oh, yeah. So it's six vine whips to a frenzy plant in this matchup. You want to sort of uh, you'll beat them to charge moves. So you want to throw and then you want to count and then try it. Like, that's not really what I do. Um, there's plenty of creators who one do that and two do it better than I possibly ever could. Um, <laughs> so rather than that, I, I've always looked and, and and by accident to an extent to be sort of the bridge between somebody who's like, hey, PvP seems fun, but boy, that's a little much for me. And you know, the the stream where you become you know uh, truly a student of that game and and learn the ins and outs. So I've always sort of realize that my my what i offer realistically uh personally and and as a as a as a creator is that you know i'm gonna engage with this feature i'm gonna use it as a way to engage with you we're gonna have some fun with it and if you truly find it engaging and you want to dive down that rabbit hole of you know really competitive play I have some of that knowledge and I can impart some of that, but I can also start sort of bring people into the fold as, hey, PvP is a worthwhile feature to engage with. It's a fun feature. It's something you should spend time with. And then also, 
you don't have to be, you know, on the GBL leaderboard to engage with this feature and enjoy it. Uh, yeah, and I think I, I, that's where I that's where I want to be. Yeah, I, I think that that balance of the fun and the strategy and the community is kind of that 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 secret sauce of what you have going on because I mean obviously you're incredibly knowledgeable about move sets and type advantage and you know the strategies of gameplay but the way that you you know put this out in a very very digestible format and with an entertainment spin I think is really why I enjoy watching your content because I feel like I don't have to take notes. I don't have to like really worry about, you know, the the structure of it all and counting moves. Like you're mm-hmm. saying, it's like I could still, you know, experience high level play. But um, it's like I mean, even it's kind of like a motto of yours, right? With keep PvP fun, isn't that like kind of something that you push and promote a little yeah, bit? Yeah, we've like, been we've, we've I, been we've been floating around with that. It, it should be fun. It's, I mean, this is a game, right? At the at the end of the day. Pokemon Go and Pokemon Go PvP, it's a game. And if you're not having fun with it, I don't think it offers enough at this time that it's worth sort of beating yourself up. I, I, there's not, you know, I I, 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 I hope for a, a future where, you know, there's a, a truly an esports path here maybe where, you know, being a, a top battler could yield, you know, an esports sort of career like it does in other places. But we're so far from that that I think... You know, I, I I feel like I'm slowly but surely going to become the poster boy for what I'm just going to call having a healthy relationship with with the game, um, and having a healthy. Re- and I, I feel like a lot of a lot of folks who really love PvP um, want it desperately to be so much more than it is right now. And it's okay to hope for that, and it's okay to want to, you know, push Niantic towards that and express how frustrated you are that this thing you love isn't you know up to the standards but at the same time you have to at some point sort of take a look at your own relationship with the feature and say maybe i should play one less gbl set a day or maybe if i have a good set i'm gonna just be done for the day maybe i don't need to feel obligated to play every set every day or maybe i need to do a couple auto rec battles you know just to remind myself part of why this is fun um i just i feel like that's something that um right now gets lost i see a lot of i see a lot of posts um i see a lot of tweets that to to me feel like people are they're putting a little much on on the experience and they're you know i think i i hesitate to say anything about you know they look like people who are probably fringing on proper mobile game addiction but it does feel a little bit like You know, people have sort of an abusive relationship with Pokemon Go in general, like and acknowledging that, uh, you know what, maybe you should take a step back and and take a day off is probably a good thing for people to do if they're starting to feel like, you know, the game is out to get them. Yeah, you know, that that's that's a good that's kind of a good way to kind of blend into the next thing I wanted to talk about here with the this the current state of the game and ultimately the state of the the culture and co- of the community right now especially online especially on social twitter specifically uh reddit as well but the w- let's let's take a look at the the state of the game from two different perspectives here because i always think that this is an interesting take let's look at it from a player's perspective you as a player and then you as a content creator now as a player what what do you think is the biggest challenge that the game has right now for as far as how the game works? Is it stability of server? Is it mechanical issues with the game? Like what do you think the biggest challenge is when you're playing the game? What 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 kind of gets to you and gets under your skin the most as a player? Yeah, I think I mean there's obviously a lot, um, but I think most of it could sort of be summed up under the umbrella of just like general smoothness and cleanness of play. Um, I think, you know, credit where credit is due, you know, Niantic adapted very quickly to the pandemic we have to, to making features available, probably fast tracking a lot of this stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, regardless of the feature that, that I'm, you know, enjoying the fact that there seems to be consistent, 
you know, small issues. Um, those those get under my skin. The new the new incense bug, for example, on Community Day, where if you clicked on a despawn, th- something despawning, it would white out your screen and you have to restart. Like those right, sorts sure. of things absolutely drive me up the wall because they're just like somehow something they did broke this thing (laughs) and i'm not exactly sure how it i feel it's the same way with pvp where it's like they fixed the cmp swap issue that people were asking for but in the process introduced two more um exactly like these little these little things like that where i mean some of those are not little i i I don't want to sort of undersell how how bad some of these these issues are when it comes to enjoyment but for me it just feels like for the last, you know, two years, they've been so they've been had this like really ambitious roadmap on features. You know, we've gotten tasks and remote raids and friendship and trading and PVP, which is almost its own game entirely. Um, we've gotten all of these things and it's like maybe for the and we got the rocket rocket stops and rocket balloons, like all of these things are insane and many of them are really great. I almost can't imagine the game without them. But maybe for the next six months, they should do nothing other than work on patching things and work on quality yeah. of life improvements. Things like being able to search for lucky friends or search for a friend where you can send a gift for the love of God. Yeah, like giftable, please. Just give it, like, I don't understand why, I mean, I do understand because I don't think that those quality of life improvements necessarily drive profit. Um, they might. I just don't think they ta- they don't do it in the tangible way that maybe uh, is looked at. Um, but as a player, those are the sorts of things that bug me. It's that the game is so close to being such a great experience, but there's always these little nagging frustrations. And many of them have been present for so long that it's just like, can we maybe take some time? And I, I think... You know the other the other one that you know we'll probably talk about in a little bit because I think it has a lot to do with the social media stuff is I would like to see a little bit more um, transparency a little a little more communication from Niantic I know there are hurdles there um, but I think that's what I think that's what most of the players are craving they want to they want the company that they've been spending time and money and all of this effort on and energy towards sort of enjoying and loving this product they want to feel that love returned um and i just don't think currently sort of the way that uh, the communication strategy is built that that's that's occurring yeah i i think that that without a doubt is something that the community is is starving for and we, you know we saw a very very small example of that uh from niantic's uh head of marketing where you know, someone mentioned fast move desync and obviously this is a huge fucking deal you know this is really just completely skewing everything when it comes to competitive play and and skill. And the acknowledgement of the issue is sometimes all it takes. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's a known issues page on Niantic Help's website and stuff like that. No one's going there. No, no, I I didn't even know it was there. (laughs) Oh my, dude, it is exceptionally in depth. It shows the the problem there. there, It's either going to be like, you know, we're aware we're working on it or it's resolved. Like they have a whole thing. I'll, I'll put a link in the description so everyone can check it out. But the difference of their head of marketing responding to someone that just happened to fucking tag him and say, hey, by the way, fix this, you know, fix, fix fast move desync. And he said, you know, something to the effect of, yes, we're aware of, aware of it. It's a super difficult problem, you know, but we're working on it. Right. Just that, just a one liner was enough to quell so many issues that the community had of they just don't fucking hear us. Right. You know, so burn this motherfucker down. You know, and it's like, but would they, you know, when someone responds with a one liner, it's like, ah, huh, OK, they hear us. So yeah. I think that that, you know, yes, transparency is exceptionally important. But I think that the acknowledgement factor, which is probably a little bit easier to get across from a social perspective from the Niantic team than saying like, okay, this is what we're doing or this is what we're fixing or this is how we're doing it rather than just having someone, you know, out there saying, yes, we're aware, we're, we're, we're right. on it. Thanks for your feedback, that kind of thing. Right. However, and we can, we can jump ahead a little bit here. The, the way the community does communicate on a lot of those issues makes it very difficult for anyone to even want to acknowledge or interact. And that that's something altogether, but I don't want to get too far ahead. All right. So 
as a player, yes, those little fucking things, definitely. Like the fact that I'm, I did 50 remote raids today, and in 46 of them, when I defeated the raid boss, I had to reboot the game. Yep, everyone yes, today for me a, too. Dude, it's brutal. It's a pain in the ass. Is it is it game breaking? Where I'm gonna you know turn the thing off? No, but is it annoying every time? Absolutely. It, so yeah, it, I'm with you on that. Is it something that will prevent me from doing some remote raids? Of course. Because it's yeah. frustrating, and I and I understand now. Like when I do it, I'm like, well, now I'm every single raid is doing this. Then if the raid ends, then I'm risking losing this pass. Yeah, I'm just gonna maybe not go as hard on remote raids because I just don't. Even though I know that I could submit a ticket and probably get my pass back, there's nothing more frustrating than like going through the trouble of going through all the raid stuff and then not even getting a chance to catch it and having to submit a ticket and all that. Like, nah, yeah, I'll just yeah. I'll just not do it. Right, right. Now, as a creator. What do you think the biggest issue with the game is, and how do those those issues affect your creation of content? Is that any different from your you know the issues that you have with with the game as a player? Um, not necessarily. Like I will say, especially as a PvP creator, the the bugs and the lag that are present in PvP create uh, you know they don't create a hurdle. It's not like I can't stream GBL. It's just that sometimes it, it, it becomes extremely frustrating to stream it. That, you know, we could be we could be having a, a good old time battling, having fun, and then, you know, we, we lose a couple games in a row on a disconnect, right? And that can be really, really frustrating. Um, all of these bugs, you know, can be frustrating. I know, for example, people who've been streaming the raids especially have been having a lot of trouble with the notification cap. Um, which isn't something I've been streaming a lot of, but I've seen a lot of creators who basically like, I had to stop raiding on stream because I couldn't receive raid invites because of this sort of cap that was placed here. Um, and so I could totally understand that. It, it, for me, like, I think the game is in a pretty good state as a creator right now, um, especially for sort of live Twitch, regardless of what kind of creator you want to be. You know, the hour incense with a spawn every minute is excellent if you just want a shiny hunt on stream. Remote raiding is awesome if you like raiding. PvP is great if you like battling. And all of these features are really in a good spot, sort of conceptually, and the fact that they're live and they function. The downside, obviously, is that, you know, all of them have their own issues and glitches and bugs, all of which sort of make the experience of, of creating for it frustrating. But truthfully, I've found, you know, at least the last few months have been pretty rewarding as a, as a creator, and I don't think... There's really anything I, I'm insistent that they change um, that isn't the same uh, experience I have as a player. That, you know, and, and that's very promising. And again, like I've seen Reversal, you know, talking about the notification cap and that something like that really is only going to affect the the elite of content creation creators that are that are going so fucking hard you know that right. are really doing it like that that's not gonna affect the masses or even the the everyday hardcore player but yeah the little nuances that affect each of those different systems mechanically in the game where there's little fuck ups or hiccups right yeah that that's that's an interesting take because that kind of shows that duality of how the game really affects players mm -hmm. and the, the creators that are behind it i mean it's still all the same process of playing the game that's yeah. that's pretty interesting i mean pokemon go but, creators at, at their core are just pokemon go players we're just <laughs> right, sharing our right, experience right. with everybody yeah the one yeah. the one looming the one looming thing is that you know these covid changes have been really good for content creation um if they roll them back and i'm thinking especially of the gbl walking requirement that will likely cause a, a contraction of the number of people streaming um, go battle league because honestly Absolutely. like i remember the days where you know i'm not super keen to throw you know premium passes or, or coins at go battle league to to just battle in it um so i hope that once they sort of figure out what the new version of that looks like if they're gonna you know i they seem to insist that the walking requirement will return at some point that it's something that remains friendly to stream if that means that you know you can stack a certain number of sets so be it but just something that allows you know for me to jump in and continue to you know stream the content that people want to see people want to see people battle and go battle league right now and i think it, it would be detrimental to 
yeah, the content creator community if, for example, we had to go back to the exact system we had previous. Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100 percent. And we, we've talked about it on Lured Up where, you know, if it is a, a matter of them allowing all five you know, sets of battles to be stacked. So that way, at least, you know, the person, if they're on a nine to five grind and they're working and they're walking or they're, whatever they're doing throughout the course of the day, they're earning towards that payoff of being able to come home and jump on a stream at 8 p.m. and say, all right, I've got 25 battles, you know, ready to go mm-hmm. and not have to invest money into the process of simply being able to play. And yeah, that would, it would, it's, I think either way, it, it's definitely going to have a major, major, major impact on not only the volume of, of content creators, but the, the quality of it, because people aren't going to be able to do these long ass streams anymore. If they're going to have to break it up by either spending money or getting out there and walking. Right. So I, I'm, I'm sure Niantic will iterate on, on it. I don't think it can ever go back to the old system. Uh, they're going to have to do something and something, you know, a little bit different. I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic when it comes to that, because I know that things are going to have to change, but you know, we, I, I do want to push a little bit towards what we were talking about earlier with the community's voice, especially on Twitter and how, you know, so many people are frustrated right now. And that addiction thing, it's like, for me, I, the other day I had to reset my, my streaks because I, for, I, you know, two years straight, I've had my, my Pokestop, you know, a day behind of my catches because I, I had a snowstorm and I couldn't spin mm-hmm. a stop. And it took me two years to come to myself to be able to say, I'm not going to spin a fucking Pokestop today. <laughs> like, that's how difficult it was. So, yeah, I got a major fucking problem. So it's like, I, I understand that a lot of people in the community, especially the vocal, you know, the vocal minority on Twitter, you know, I can't imagine any of them saying, hey, I'm going to put the game down for a day. Like, that's just not in the cards. So that frustration is kind of amplified by the desire and the need to play. I need it. I need it in my life. That's the only thing that's going to get me through the day is if I can play, play, play. So, you know, I think that that what I've seen from even like you, you, you put out a tweet today, you know, and you're kind of talking about the way we communicate and the way, you know, the, the fa- and I've, I've caught so much shit on, on Twitter for this because I'm... I subscribe to the don't be a dick philosophy. Sure. It's like, you're totally allowed to be frustrated. Shit, you're, you're allowed to be angry. You're allowed to be upset. But you have to understand that there's ways to communicate those feelings. Mm-hmm. And I think you you had a great tweet today where you're like, you just got to remember that no matter how frustrated you are or how angry you are, the person reading that tweet is fucking human. That's right. a human on the other end. And I, I it's just, I, I feel that it's very important for creators to put themselves out there and like when I read your tweet I was like fuck yeah this is awesome because you know you're 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 taking a stand and saying like look we we it's okay to be frustrated it really yeah. is and but you have to remember that we we need to communicate in a way that's still retains humanity right and I think that's why I was catching so much shit because you know, they would say, oh, you're a fucking shill. Like, you, you're you going to blow smoke up Niantic's ass no matter what, no matter how fucked up the game is. And it's like, no, I'm just not going to be a dick about it. I'm going to yeah. be <laughs> exceptionally critical. I'm going to be hypercritical over everything. And if something doesn't work, yeah, I'm going to call it out. But I'm not going to take a pot shot about their schooling or their qualifications to right. work there or the fact that they don't play the game, you know, like, like yeah, just well, and all I've seen pot that. shots. Yeah. I've seen that. I've seen that. The, uh, the old, like that's always a, a common refrain on Reddit when I were, there's, you know, a bunch of people complain. It's like, I've heard that no one there even plays the game. And, and oh come on. my God, we all that, know that that burns that's, my ass. It's total fucking bullshit. A ton <laughs> of people in Niantic. In fact, I would argue probably a lot of people play and many of them are probably there because they play, and they wanted to make the game better. Um, I, I think there's a lot we don't know about how you know the game is made, how it's structured, those sorts of things. And we can sort of get to that. I mean, I've been I've been trying on this new be human sort of uh, mon like I don't know uh, what is what's the phrase, just sort of like like uh, motto. Where this has sort of happened with raids where, you know, in our in our discord, we were running into a lot of people. We've been hosting a lot of remote raids and people would join the discord when they find out and they would just like they would just copy pasta. Anyone got raids into the channel over and over again. And eventually it was like, you just got to be human just for a second. 
be human. Don't be a robot. Don't be a bot. Act like you're a person. Um, and it sort of has has become kind of a, a a mantra for us, where it's like at all times, just be a person. Be be you know, understand that how you phrase and put things together. Like there's some humanity evolved into it. So there's people on the other end of that. Treat them with some amount of respect. I understand, especially for people who spend a lot of money on the game. That I I just I feel like they don't feel like they're being heard. And eventually that that bubbles over and it boils over. And I think that, you know, if you're especially if you're spending a lot of money on Pokemon Go right now, you've got all kinds of reasons to be frustrated and you can absolutely and should express your frustration at Niantic for for those things. But I also think that, you know, at some point your frustration needs to be expressed constructively and also, you know, from a place of. I really just want this to be better. Here's what I experienced. Here's how it made me feel. Here's some solutions. Um, you know, I, I have a customer service background, so like I'm used to being yelled at. I, I've worked the returns desk at a Best Buy. I, I know what it is to be yelled at for stupid shit. Um, but at the end of the day, like I don't think necessarily, you know, especially when you start to veer into personal attack land or, you know, the, the, the common refrain, which is just like, how can a company that makes this much money, you know, not put out a right. better product? And I just think right. there's, a, sure. there's, there's, there's more to this reality than, you know, we know on a, on a casual outside perspective. And I think, you know, directing essentially, you know, personal attacks at, at folks who work there, I, I don't think is going to get you anywhere. I think it's just, I, I, I don't know. I just, I think it'll get you some, some likes on, on social media. It'll get you, it'll get you that endorphin rush of, yeah, we all are rallying against the man. But yeah, at the end of the I day, showed like, you. <laughs> yeah, cool. It's not going to, it's not going to get you anywhere. So, you know, like for the, for the dino box, for example, for, for egg hatching, I think we, we can all agree that they, they misdialed that. They, they definitely misdialed sure. the, the hatch rate. But, you know, the question I posed on social media, which was, you know, would you rather basically have a massively high chance of hatching a shiny but a low chance of hatching a dino at all? Or would you just rather hatch a bunch of dinos even if the shiny chance were super low? And the vote was universally, we just want to see the fucking dinos. Um, <laughs> right, and I think that, like, right. sometimes feedback like that is more helpful. Because I think, like, you know, the way that they built that was, like, you know, probably a good percentage of the dinos that were hatched were shiny. It was just that many people never saw one. Um, and I think yeah. that, like, you know, generating feedback from the community, especially on a content creator side, being able to, like, you know, figure out, hey, how do we... How do we take something that people are 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 mad about and express it and generate sort of feedback in a way that can be passed on that actually might result in some philosophical changes that maybe the answer is that. And, and I, I feel this way strongly about the egg pool, that the issue with the egg pool is it's just always too large, that if the if eggs were more reliably hatching the thing you wanted even if it wasn't necessarily sh like in the case of dino shiny people would be more inclined to buy more incubators because when you Absolutely. can when you can ensure yep. the incubator result to an extent people are going to be happier like most of the time i think if they wanted to sell the most incubators they should just make you know give it the regular shiny hatch rate maybe one in 400 i don't care but if every single egg had a dino in it you would have had less complaining you would have had people complaining about yeah. the shiny rate but at least they knew what they were getting when they bought their incubator, um, as opposed to what, you know, I think we're seeing a lot of conversation about odds disclosure and, and loot boxes, which, you know, I, I think it would be good to disclose the odds of that sort of stuff so people could make smarter decisions. Um, but uh, I think that, like, finding a way to take something that could very easily be, like, phrased feedback as, hey... Look at this scummy company scumming us, those scum lords, and taking a go, okay, right. here's the thing we don't like. How would we prefer this to be done in the future is just a much more helpful and beneficial way to get that feedback there. Express frustration. I'm frustrated that I bought a box of incubators I didn't hatch a dino. You know, I, I really do feel like we've earned this reward and, uh, you know, these should be more common. Here's something that I think would be better. There's your tweet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. And, you know, it, it's very important to, you know, for, again, this vocal minority on Twitter. And 
what what stinks a little bit about it is it creates when when you see this negativity and you know the the person that's that's putting that out there in the world gets that endorphin rush right they get that rush of mm-hmm. you know keyboard warrior fucking you know whatever machismo it's like they do that and then someone reads it and then they feel it and it's like they're sharpening the fucking pitchfork and then the next mm-hmm. person's like i got a fucking torch and the next person's got a sword and it's like before you know it you have this mob mentality where everyone's just fucking going in and yeah. it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, everyone needs to fucking chill out. Like, yeah, you're, you're and, losing sight. <laughs> yeah, and I do think that that is, you know, I, I had mentioned it the first time and, and on the thread that you had put out that I think a lot of that is folks who are heavily invested in the game, both emotionally and financially in some cases, not feeling like they're being heard because of, you know, the, the corporate sort of strategy which is or or the limitation of you know not being able to really properly uh interface with the community i think that's kind of an interesting thing like that you know what you're seeing uh you know the the folks who do work at Niantic who are getting sort of more active personally on social media it's actually sort of helping to alleviate that a little bit but at the end of the day you know i think people crave that re- that interaction they crave the ability to sort of get the one-to-one and that's just not possible when it comes to you know the size and scope of this but at the same time i think that you're seeing the the sort of totaling of all of these years of feeling like you're just not being heard of this issue existing and it not being fixed and i think eventually you 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 can do nothing other um, then get there. You, you, if you have if you have a healthy relationship, with the game a really healthy relationship. What ends up happening is you probably drift away from the game. I think we have a lot of folks who have borderline unhealthy relationships with the game. And I say this from a place with love. I love many people, and I probably have a borderline <laughs> unhealthy relationship with the game. Even, oh, I'll even be the talking. first one to say, like, but no, man, it's like if I've, I'm, I'm yeah. taking a shit between wipes, I'm fucking picking up the phone, dude. It's right? Like, I'm, I can't stop. Yeah. So I, the answer is that I think like. You know, everyone involved needs to probably and I think, you know, every time you have a a, a harshly negative feeling about something, every time you lag out of a GBL battle and you're like, fuck this game, throwing your phone down, you should probably stop for a second and go, all right, maybe I should you know step away from it for the rest of the day maybe i don't maybe i don't need to play this anymore maybe i can go go do something else and you know if you want to express that frustration do it but yeah give it like 10 minutes of cool down um i just feel like that's you know uh, was gonna help us build a better community at the end of the day um one where ultimately you know if i were speaking as somebody who ran a marketing department for a company if the people enjoying my product were sort of this angry all the time. I wouldn't want a one-to-one interface with them anyway, right? You don't, you don't necessarily want to start opening more of those doors. Like, you know, I think that a Q and a directly with developers on Pokemon go would be an amazing experience. Be able to basically ask them questions about specific things. What are the goals of this? What are the plans? That sort of stuff. But given the way the community expresses feedback currently, that's never going to happen. So at some point, something's got to give right some point you know we we as a community need to go all right let's figure out how we more you know m- are more measured in our feedback um and if we can do that maybe that'll start to open the door for more direct responses to our feedback because if if it's all gonna be just sort of pure hostility then you're never going to be able to, from the co- corporate side, you're never going to be able to really engage because you're opening the door to, to more of that. Man, it's it's very refreshing to hear, and, and I think that only good stuff can come from that mindset. And I think that, you know, having creators that have communities and have an audience that feel this way and are, are overt about sharing that style, I think it's very important. And uh, I think you you hit the nail on the head uh, with the kind of AMA style thing. And because not only does that provide community interaction, but it also gives some degree of transparency and awareness mm-hmm. for both sides of the fence. And right. but to that to, to to your same point, yeah, if if you're bringing you know uh, torches and pitchforks to the AMA, you, you're not going to be heard. 
Right. But if you bring, you know, a reasonable, logical question, even if it's rooted in frustration there, you know, but th- that type of thing, I, I think, you know, we just saw something very similar on Reddit with uh, Casey from Niantic, who did it for Wayfarer. Mm. And it was a bit of a bloodbath. But guess what? He, you know, they were in there and, and they made it happen. And the community, like the thread blew the fuck up and there were so many people interacting and it was it was great. And it was, you know, it got people talking. And after the the whole thing ended, it was like, when are we doing this again? Like, I have more questions. And it's like that was it. It started facilitating this very healthy culture of, okay, this is how we can communicate. Right. And, and I, yeah, and I, was, I think I that really, there needs to be a big paradigm shift on. Yeah, Twitter for I sure. really want to see more of that. And I, 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 you know, we're we're in this awkward, like, sort of standoff here where I think on the corporate side, you know, it's hard to really open those doors for communication because, you know, of how hostile the community has 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 been at times. And on our side for, you know, the community I totally understand the anger. Like I, I, I would say that one of the things that I, you know, would would definitely is like I, I understand. I, I've, I've felt genuinely angry at the game on occasion, um, and I think that there definitely are legitimate critiques being leveled towards Niantic on those angles. But I also think that like at some point you just have to sort of take a deep breath and go, all right, how do I actually get what I want? Right? How do I actually? Pass this feedback, and if all you want is a bunch of likes and retweets, then you know what? I guess that's what you're getting, what you want, you know. And and maybe maybe that is for some people, but I think like most of the people who are voicing their complaints loudly would like to see improvements and change. They care, they genuinely do care, and they want it. But it's definitely been, you know, it's been it's been pretty it's been pretty rough, and and you know, I definitely feel like at the end of the day, just making sure that you know. If if something if you think something is broken in Pokemon Go, it doesn't matter how much you want it to be great. Maybe try and engage with that feature a little less. If you find GBL frustrating because of the lag and the bugs, maybe realize that it's not worth your time to GBL. Maybe if you think remote rating is totally broken, don't do it. Like I, I think on one hand that'll also send a, a more direct message. I'm confident that Niantic is looking at the number of people who are doing stuff. So when they share something like one billion GBL battles happened, um, then that is a successful feature. And right, right. Y- 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 at some point, what they're going to actually respond to is people saying, you know what, this feature isn't ready for me to enjoy it. So I'm just going to go ahead and abstain. Yeah, I, I, I think you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And, you know, it's you know, it, it's a it's a, a paradigm shift. It's a fundamental shift in the way people approach the game. And that's not an easy it's not an easy switch to, to flip in, in a lot of minds because that's it, it takes a lot to be able to walk away. Um, you know, because there is this addictive quality that, you know, is kind of this this silent thing going on here. And it's like, yeah, man, that's 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 a tough one. But I think that's that's great perspective. And, uh, you know, as we as we kind of wrap up here, I, I think that I think it's very important that this conversation is being is being had. And I think that we, we got to you know, I always encourage the community to continue these conversations online, continue them with their local groups and get people's vibes and figure out where where their community is and share that feedback because it's important that all this stuff gets pushed as far up the food chain as possible. But like you like you just detailed, in a manner that's constructive and gives options and Mm -hmm. you know it's if you're only looking for the for the likes and the clicks it's like all right all right i'm not you know i guess i can't stop you but you know don't really ask for change then because it ain't gonna happen like that i like i i've never called a, a company that i had a bad customer service you know situation with i never called anywhere and was a dick to the person on the phone and got my right. way no but when i go when i call them and i you know call them by their first name and say this is my scenario how can you help me guess what right. shit gets shit gets done yeah. and it's like we just got to apply those same philosophies of life the be human element 
to what the hell is going on here because right. we can't we can't keep on going and and you know it's like I, I say we because you know that this community is very united even if we have different perspectives and we have different ways of dealing with shit it's like we are the Pokemon Go community so right. it's like we uh, the 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 as the community proper, you know, we just have to have to have a little bit of a shift here. I, th- yeah. I think you you really nailed it, man. I'm actually funny. The, this is reminding me of a, a a funny GoFest anecdote. So you know, for GoFest, you know, it was me and a couple friends um, who are, are extremely sort of committed to the game. In fact, they're some of the folks that that are on um, Trade Wars for my stream. And we're walking around with with uh, one of their roommates who is much more of a casual player. She'll frequently come out for a community day for half an hour, catch her for a shiny, and then go home. That's that's how she likes to play. And we were doing what every Pokemon Go player does, which was walking around bitching about the event. And some of it is just <laughs> the fun, cathartic experience of being like, God damn it, another temple. Really? Why is temple right, here? Right. We don't want temples. <laughs> and so and eventually she's like, y'all, if you don't fucking stop doing this, I'm going to have to leave. <laughs> and I'm going to go play by myself. And it's just like it's a reminder that like. You know, for a lot of folks, you know, the, the folks who are uh, for those of us who are on Twitter, for those of us who are, you know, engaging with content creators, many of us are truly the one percenters of Pokemon Go that there's a lot of folks who just enjoy the game sort of for what it is casually. They're not, you know, doing that. I think that, like, you know, there's always a little bit of, of you know, measuring that needs to happen that we're just, you know, we're 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 consumers of a game. We can enjoy that game. We can be frustrated by it. But at the end of the day, you know, the people who make the game are people. Let's at least try and treat them a little bit like that. And uh, I think ultimately, you know, the more positive as a community we can be, the more likely Niantic is going to want to get involved with that community. And just as somebody who's been Absolutely. in their in a similar sho- shoes, like you don't want to wade, you know, into a, a mire. You don't want to be like, oh, everybody's angry. You know what we should do? Let's uh, let's go walk right into that and, and talk to people. Like, I know that some, of, some people are going to be like, well, that's what they should be doing. And, and you know what? I'm not saying you're wrong. Um, but at the same time, they're, they're, they're seemingly risk adverse. So at some point, we just have to realize that if we want to open a dialogue with Niantic as far as sort of improving Pokemon Go that we also have to sort of do our part to make that sort of make the effort to be human about it let's leave it at that Dude, I, I think that's a, a, a perfect a perfect spot to, to end the talk today I think that's great and I think that through all of this talking about you know your your journey and your content and your background and, and ultimately your position on all this I think it is has definitely um, helped paint a, a very solid picture of, of who you are as a person and as a creator and and that that would make me want to engage in your content and I'm, I'm hoping that everyone from the podcast universe if you haven't connected with Alfendi all and his content on Twitch and YouTube and on socials you got you know it's like there's a lot of people out there and there's not a lot of good people. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like we got to support people that are positive and and putting out positive energy and it's just like you know, when when you find someone that has these views, you got to make sure you support them. So, I, dude, I, I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you talking on these issues because uh, it's it's a uh, it's not the most comfortable space to talk in right now because the the community is so volatile. So, I I, I absolutely a hundred percent. I really do appreciate you talking to these issues because. Uh, it's definitely important, and I, I think I think that you know having these these attitudes and these philosophies will definitely lead to change. So that that's fucking awesome. But um, where where why don't you let our community know where they can find you, you know, you know, and all that good stuff. And of course, links will be in the description to everywhere you can connect with Alfindiol. But where you know anything we can expect from the channel, just keep doing what you're doing. Like tell us about what you have going on, and yeah. where we can find you. Absolutely. And I also, you know, I'm realizing now that we've talked for for well over an hour and I haven't once mentioned uh, a butthole or the fact that, you know, we do themed tournaments around fucking Pokemon. It's actually remarkable (laughs) that we went this this deep without even getting into any of that. That's a little tease for for folks who are wondering exactly what kind of content they can expect from us. But um, conveniently, Alfindiel, not really a thing. So if you go to basically any social media platform and search for Alfindiel, you're going to find me. Um, I'm pretty active on Twitter. Um, I've got YouTube 
uh, channels as well. Um, you know, we stream uh, five days a week on Twitch now, and uh, actually just launched a Patreon as well, which is uh, you know a big deal for me. It's it's I, I've joked a little bit uh, about you know it's one of the more uncomfortable things I've done because you know ultimately sort of pricing your own time and sort of the like like at some point I'm like I'm pricing your ability to hang out with me and it feels weird um to ask for you know to ask for people to you know do that but at the same time it's one of those things where you know as I transition try and try and do this full time you know I'm looking for opportunities to sort of be able to engage with people on a different level than what I do you know when I stream on Twitch or with the videos I put on YouTube so that's uh just launched all that information uh is obviously on uh on my Twitter is probably the best place to find it but um reasonably you know the plan is to to keep sort of growing as a creator to keep branching out to keep coming up with with stupid ideas and seeing if they work so you know especially on twitch i've got i've got a lot of bad ideas coming down the pipeline as far as ways to uh enjoy pokemon go and hopefully over the next couple months you'll get to see some of those uh come to life well i'm i'm very proud to say that i'm officially a butt fan as of about 10 seconds ago yeah (laughs) he's he's got a tear on his patreon he's a butt fan it's like such a child (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, dude, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I really appreciate it. I I look forward to a time when the world is in a better place and we could fucking hang out and have a beer oh, and, yeah. and, and do some trades, man, because uh, I, I'd, I'd love to be able to do that and, and all that good stuff. But I, I look forward to hanging out with your community and your streams, man. It's always a good fucking time on your streams. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate you having me back. Awesome. And everyone else, thank you so much for checking this out. Uh, this is the Lured Up Podcast Creator Series. Please check out LuredUp.com for everything that's going on at the show. PokemonProfessor.com for everything that's going on at the network. And uh, next week, we have G2G.media coming on the show. So definitely check out that. And we have uh, we just put out um, we have our Ghost Stadium Roundtable coming out this week as well that we recorded live on Twitch last week. So got a lot of stuff going on. Just check out Lured up.com to stay up to date and once again ken alfindial thank you so much for coming on the show keep training trainers we'll see you next week